Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. 219 days of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Moscow hosted a ceremony of annexing the eastern and southern regions of Ukraine to Russia. In response, Ukraine submitted an application to join NATO under an accelerated procedure. When Putin spoke at the Kremlin, there were strong explosions in Crimea, and losses and deaths were counted in Zaporizhia after a Russian missile attack on a civilian column. Eight years ago, Vladimir Putin signed a decree on the annexation of Crimea. Today in Moscow, he has annexed more Ukrainian territories. On the basis of his decree, the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kyrgyzstan oblasts are to officially become part of the Russian Federation. The people have made their choice. It is a clear choice. I believe that there will be federal and constitutional support for the four new regions to become part of the Russian Federation. Earlier today, in response to Vladimir Putin's lies, President Volodymyr Zelensky signed Ukraine's application to join NATO in an accelerated procedure. De facto, we have proved compatibility with the NATO standards, and that standards are real for Ukraine. They are real on the battlefield and in all aspects of our cooperation. Today, Ukraine is submitting an application de jure under a procedure consistent with our significance for the protection of our entire community under an accelerated procedure. It is our country that always proposed to Russia to agree on coexistence on equal, honest, dignified and fair conditions. Clearly, with this Russian president, it is impossible. He does not know what dignity and honesty are. Therefore, we are ready for a dialogue with Russia, but with another president of Russia. The leaders of world powers agree that the plebiscites conducted by the Russian authorities in Ukraine are illegal. Ukraine has lost more than 15 percent of its territory under referendums. I want to underscore that the so-called referenda in the occupied regions were conducted during active armed conflict in areas under Russian occupation and outside Ukraine's legal and constitutional framework. They cannot be called the genuine expression of the popular will. We cannot be indifferent to the change in the status quo of a sovereign state. We will continue to work with G7 members and the international community and take decisive steps against Russia. The European Union is likely to announce the eighth package of sanctions against Russia on Monday. The United States is working on the restrictions in parallel. The so-called referenda was a sham, an absolute sham. The results were manufactured in Moscow, and uh, the, the, uh, the true will of the Ukrainian people is evident every day as they sacrifice their lives to save their people and maintain the independence of their country and uh, in defense of uh, freedom as well. Russian President Vladimir Putin pledged last Wednesday to defend Russian territory by all necessary means, including the use of nuclear weapons. The unprecedented statement made experts concerned about the Ukrainian counteroffensive. It is necessary to keep a tremendous distance from any such scenarios for the reason that there is still a certain barrier of fear when it comes to the use of nuclear weapons. But certainly the incorporation from the Russian perspective of occupied lands in an illegal manner will be elementary to some extent, used in cooperation with the element of nuclear weapons. There are over 62,000 shelters in Poland, which in the event of a nuclear attack can accommodate a total of about 1.3 million people. However, most of them do not meet the current standards of reacting to a nuclear attack. The Ministry of Interior and Administration is successfully distributing potassium iodide in case of emergency. The shielding agent will soon go to schools and fire brigades. Our activities are of a routine, standard nature, as stipulated by law in the event of a possible radiation emergency. Kiev continues its counteroffensive aimed at liberating the occupied territories. Today, Ukrainian forces have encircled Wiman and are close to success. Capturing the city will mean that the Ukrainian army has moved less than 50 kilometers from Severodonetsk. In response, the Russians shot at a convoy of Ukrainian civilians that was trying to reach the occupied part of Zaporizhia region. Hitting a municipal bus fleet with an Iskander, demolishing electric substations, residential buildings, transport stops, killing civilians. Does anyone still need more evidence of the Russian invaders' moral degradation? Soon, 20,000 Russian soldiers will be stationed in Belarus. However, according to the authorities in Kiev, Russian forces will not launch an attack from the north in the near future. 
The Kremlin continues to violate the principles of partial mobilization it has announced. So support for hostilities in Ukraine has dropped to 44 percent. Speculation is multiplying about leaks from Nord Stream gas pipelines. German investigators claim that highly effective explosives were used. According to the information from the Spiegel Weekly, it has been calculated that the pipes could be damaged as a result of the explosion of several hundred kilograms of TNT. These reports also confirm the so far preliminary findings of Denmark and Sweden. We know that all four pipelines of Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 were unsealed and there was a leak at a depth of about 70 meters. We know that there were approximately 350,000 cubic meters of gas in the pipelines. We know that there must have been explosions because they were registered by seismologists. However, when it comes to causes, motives, and direct perpetrators, we are moving in the realm of guesswork. The first investigation teams will not arrive until the leak is over and the threat has passed. It's, it's, very, it's very likely that it has been done deliberately and not by accident. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has announced plans to launch its own investigation, and Russian intelligence has already announced today that it has materials pointing to deliberate actions by the West. In my opinion, the West is doing everything possible to hide the real perpetrators and organizers of this international terrorist act. The reservoir where the gas pipelines were unsealed is constantly controlled by the Danish Air Force. A navigational alert has been issued for civil shipping within five nautical miles around leaks. In terms of uh, the um, attack or the, the damage to the pipeline, um, at this point I think uh, there, there's a lot of speculation, but quite frankly, uh, until uh, complete uh, investigation is done, uh, no one will be able to really uh, determine for certain what happened. Experts are speaking very cautiously on this matter, but the former head of Polish diplomacy, Radosław Sikorski, knew the truth one day after the explosion and thanked the perpetrators. The failure of Nord Stream narrows Putin's room for maneuver. If he wants to resume gas supplies to Europe, he will have to talk to the countries controlling the Brotherhood and Yamal pipelines. This is with Ukraine and Poland. Well done. Thank you, USA. The words of Radosław Sikorski were referred to by the Minister of Justice and the Public Prosecutor General, Zbigniew Ziobro. Radosław Sikorski deleted his entry only after the U.S. State Department categorically announced that his behavior was a function of Russian disinformation. The mask fell off. Only this afternoon, the chairman of the civic platform, Donald Tusk, responded to the entry of his former minister. Minister Sikorski, Minister Sikorski is well aware that he displayed unnecessary extravagance. This entry was neither wise nor necessary, nor responsible. This is a civic platform issue, but I didn't like this tweet from the beginning. I wouldn't publish such things. If the post has to be referred to by the State Department of the U.S. to deny this tweet, it is bad for the civic platform party. The White House reacted to it. It had to react to it. In fact, this American position meant that they rightly demanded that the civic platform respond to it, whether it accepts it or not. The former foreign minister initially insisted that this was his private opinion and did not intend to withdraw from it. Yesterday, the head of the Civic Coalition Club, Boris Budka, defended his party friend. But after talking to Donald Tusk, Sikorsky withdrew from his sensational theory. Earlier today, European Union countries disagreed about whether and how to cap runaway gas prices. Germany is among those opposing the measure that 15 other nations said was needed to tackle Europe's energy crunch. This week, 15 countries, including France, Italy and Poland, asked Brussels to propose a price cap on all wholesale gas transactions to contain inflation. Uh, uh, there is definitely... Uh, uh 15 countries which believes, you know, that the price cap uh, um, is the proper way uh, uh, to go. However, we see uh, really uh, technical differences uh, even within the approaches of, of, uh, of, of the single countries. And, uh, and uh, of course, we ask the Commission to put together, I can call it an expert group, in order to evaluate uh, the positive and negative impacts uh, of all options we have. Speaking after the meeting, the EU's energy commissioner, Kadri Simpson, said that there was no agreement on what such a cap would look like. And personally, I believe we could impose a price cap on all Russian imported gas, including LNG. However, some member states see 
this as a sanction, and we don't yet have a consensus on this step, how to limit Russia's ability to finance the war on Ukraine. Denmark, Austria and the Netherlands sided with Germany in opposing the idea, which they said could leave countries struggling to buy gas if they cannot compete with buyers in price-competitive global markets. A fixed price cap on gas can only work if we answer the question of what happens if not enough gas comes to Europe. That is the key issue. The only answer I hear is that then the amount would be divided up in Europe. I do not think that is politically possible. That would drive Europe and the European mechanism to the limit, probably to its end. Brussels suggested that the European Union could move ahead with a narrower price cap, for example, by just capping Russian gas supplies. But countries including Belgium and Hungary were against it. Another idea, akin to what Spain was already doing at home, was to target specifically gas used for power generation. By introducing EU-wide measures, Brussels hopes to overlay governments' uneven national approaches to the energy crunch, which have seen richer EU countries far outspend poorer ones in handing out cash to ailing companies and consumers struggling with bills. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.